In 2015, 343 Industries and Saber Interactive, who did work on the Halo Combat Evolved and Halo 2 campaign remasters, released a beta for a free-to-play Halo game on PC called Halo Online. While Halo Online looked a lot like Halo 4, it was actually a heavily modified version of Halo 3. This got fans that had for so long wanted to see Halo 3 on PC excited, but for whatever reason, Halo Online was only available in Russia. While Russia is an odd region to make a game exclusive to, the act of creating a free-to-play version of a AAA franchise is not unprecedented. In 2013, a free-to-play version of Call of Duty, Call of Duty Online, was released exclusively in China. However, unlike Call of Duty Online, Halo Online was cancelled. Why they would go through all the trouble of porting Halo 3 to PC only for it to end like this is anyone's guess. Of course, hardcore Halo fans being hardcore Halo fans, a leaked build was modded to be playable for those not in Russia after the game was officially cancelled. Over the past two years, this mod known as El Dorito has been one of the few options available for those looking to enjoy a classic Halo experience on PC. I started playing El Dorito two months ago, and while it had numerous issues, a low player population was the most devastating. This was version 0.5 of the mod, and I kept hearing about this fabled 0.6 release that was coming soon. On April 20th, 0.6 was released. This update was game-changing. It added dual-wielding, fixed the audio lag, added official servers, a better UI, and most noticeably, it did away with most of the Halo 4 visuals that were left over from the original Halo Online. This update is to the point where I feel like I'm legitimately playing Halo 3 on PC. I've tried other Halo PC fan projects, but after playing El Dorito Point 6, I was convinced this was going to be the one. And clearly, others agreed. This update had the side effect of fixing the biggest problem facing all of these Halo fan games, player count. Last night, at midnight no less, there were 7,465 players online concurrently. That's considerably more than a lot of officially released AAA games on Steam. With this newfound player base, El Dorito managed to become a viable multiplayer game. It's also managed to do what the Master Chief Collection was supposed to do, bring back that classic Halo community feeling. Almost every lobby I've played in has been full of talkative players that make me feel like I'm back in 2007. Come on now. We've got enough to worry about without you two trying to kill each other. Were it so easy. Yesterday, on the 24th, I was playing some big team battle when someone said that 343 had some things to say about our new favorite game. I thought it was a joke, but sure enough, 343 posted a statement regarding the El Dorito mod on Halo Waypoint. Today, we want to let our community know that Microsoft has initiated actions to protect its Halo intellectual property in the wake of the recent El Dorito PC release. Community-created content has long been a key pillar in the Halo franchise and something we have consciously sought to support, from the early beginnings of Red vs. Blue to Forge-made maps and modes to the Halo Custom Edition to original recent fan creations like Installation 01. These projects, and others like them, have one key factor in common. They fit within Microsoft's established content usage guidelines. Back in 2014, Microsoft, 343, and Saber Interactive partnered to develop Halo Online, a title that was being developed exclusively for the Russian market. The game was subsequently put on indefinite hold, but Halo Online ended up in the wild beyond its intended audience and official scope, resulting in DMCA takedown notices being issued by Microsoft. As time went by, Halo Online faded and fell off the radar until the recent exposure of the Point .6 update shined a new light on the current El Dorito project. While we are humbled and inspired to see the amount of passion poured into this project, the fact remains that it's built upon Microsoft-owned assets that were never lawfully released or authorized for this purpose. As this project reverberated across the community, our team took a step back to assess the materials and explore possible avenues, while Microsoft, like any company, has a responsibility to protect its IP, code, and trademarks. It's not optional, in other words. We'd like to clear up a few areas of confusion we've seen across the community over the past few days regarding El Dorito and other fan-made projects. 
In the case of the original Halo Custom Edition, that was a specific add-on to Halo PC to officially empower the mod and content creation community to essentially go nuts with Halo Combat Evolved. It even required a valid Halo PC retail key. More recently, Installation 01 has garnered some buzz and even made headlines for receiving a thumbs up from 343. Installation 01 is an original work, built from the ground up in a separate engine that abides by Microsoft's content usage guidelines. With Halo Online, there's a common misconception that once it was cancelled, the assets were either turned over as open source or left for the community's whims as abandonware, neither of which is actually true. Not only did Microsoft issue takedown notices at the time of the original leaks, but many elements of that underlying code and content are still actively being used today, and will continue to be in the future. As Microsoft's need to protect its IP spun up, we reached out to the members of the El Dorito team to have an open discussion about the project and the admittedly difficult situation we all find ourselves in. The El Dorito team is understandably upset at this outcome given the time they've each invested in this project, but they understand the legal implications and the need to press pause on this work. One thing remains clear, the community really wants more Halo on PC. As we look ahead, we're very excited about the prospects of an official classic Halo experience making its way to PC, and we hope to be able to partner with the El Dorito team and broader mod community and content creation community to help inform the types of experiences and features our fans desire. While we have nothing to announce today, please know that the PC community is very important to us and top of mind as we look towards the future. We'd like to extend our thanks to the community at large for constantly pouring so much passion into Halo. While it's unfortunate to find ourselves as the bearers of bad legal news, the outpouring of support and excitement is inspiring, and together, in partnership with this community, we believe we can really do great things for the future of Halo. Just from reading this, it's kind of unclear what the direct result will be on El Dorito, but from reading various sources, including the El Dorito team's post, I was able to piece together what's going on. The El Dorito mod itself, as well as the servers, are open source and do not use any Microsoft assets, so those are not in any immediate danger. However, the same cannot be said for the full game package. While the framework of the mod is still allowed, distribution of the original Halo Online code, which is the base upon which the mod is built, is now prohibited. Of course, this isn't going to stop individuals who have the files from uploading them, but it'll likely be a cat and mouse game of Microsoft takedowns and user re-uploads. This might not seem like a big deal to some people, but it makes El Dorito much less accessible to new players than it was before. Additionally, the mod team has halted any further development. I'm not entirely clear on why, though. They were asked to do so by Microsoft, but according to the mod team, there was no cease and desist or DMCA, and as I already mentioned, the mod itself should still be allowed, so I don't know what this is about. So that's the context and the facts. Let's move on to what I think of the situation. After my history lesson, the first thing you might remember is that El Dorito is not new. It's been a thing for two years. If El Dorito doing what it does with Halo Online is not legally above board, it's no more or less in violation of Microsoft's IP than it was two years ago. This means that the primary motivation for 343 and Microsoft's initiation of some ambiguous action is due to the sudden spike in popularity, more than it is the legal principle they make it out to be. Microsoft is for sure in the right here legally though. It's their IP, their assets, and their code. However, I still think it's not only a dick move, but a tone-deaf one as well. El Dorito's success is not Microsoft's loss. If anything, they have something to gain from it. First off, it's not like there's any paid Halo games on PC that El Dorito is in competition with, because if there were, El Dorito wouldn't exist in the first place. It's simply filling a void that Microsoft has for years refused to fill themselves. Next, we need to talk about the Halo brand, which has been in a dire position since 343 took the reins from Bungie. Microsoft thought they could turn Halo into a Star Wars level franchise, but they failed catastrophically. I can't think of another modern franchise that was as large as Halo was, that is now as dead as Halo is. In my opinion, the Combat Evolved remaster was just wrong, Halo 4 looked and felt like a free-to-play game, and while I enjoyed Halo 5's multiplayer, it launched with a paltry amount of content and the worst campaign in Halo history. 
Some Halo fans like 4 and 5, and some hate them. But I think we can all agree that the Master Chief Collection was a complete disaster. It just didn't work at launch, and the bulk of the damage it did to the Halo brand is likely irreparable. Obviously, Microsoft and 343 had no involvement in the creation of El Dorito. But how could all the positive press and word of mouth that it's getting be anything other than good for the Halo brand? This is the most excited and active I've seen the Halo fanbase since the announcement of the Master Chief Collection. At this point, all Halo has left is that core fanbase, so to go and do this to them is PR suicide. Head of Xbox, Phil Spencer, attempted to mitigate some of the damage by emphasizing part of the 343 post. As we look ahead, we're very excited about the prospects of an official classic Halo experience making its way to PC, and we hope to be able to partner with the El Dorito team and broader mod and content community. To me, that last part about the mod community sounds like an empty platitude, but the first part is something I've been convinced of for a while. Based off the new patch that's being worked on for MCC on Xbox, I thought it likely that a PC version would be announced at this year's E3 and the statement seems to signal that something is indeed in the works. Would MCC on PC solve the Halo problem? No, I don't think so. A potential MCC on PC is marred by two inescapable issues. Firstly, all Xbox first-party games are Windows 10 Store exclusives, an immediate death sentence to any game. Secondly, the Halo 2 Classic that exists in the MCC is just the Vista PC port, which is notorious for its issues compared to the original Xbox version. The Windows 10 Store is easily the bigger issue here. The Xbox Play Anywhere program is great for people like myself that don't want to play on console, but the Windows Store is the fucking worst. I've got multiple games on there and had serious issues getting a few of them to even run. Then, all the games on there are hooked up to your Xbox account, which is another obnoxious thing to deal with. I might put up with the Windows Store from time to time, but most people don't. Of course, this is all assuming the game would even function properly, and even if it did, some of the things that make El Dorito so great, like the server browser, wouldn't be present. So this was everything, until I heard that Microsoft was slapping DMCAs on Twitch streams and YouTube videos with El Dorito gameplay. So if you're watching a version of this video that doesn't have gameplay in the background, that's what happened. I was having trouble thinking of what Microsoft could do to make the situation as bad as possible, but this is definitely it. I think Microsoft has made a terrible series of decisions here, damaging themselves and the Halo brand every step of the way, but we'll have to see how things play out. If you'd like to mirror this video in the event it gets taken down, you're more than welcome to do so. If this situation somehow finds a way to get worse, I'll likely make a follow-up video. Until then, thanks for watching.